Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news report today. We were just talking about uh, these drone strikes in Pakistan and the eugenics, eugenicists going in there trying to vaccinate their children. Uh, defining what a militant really is, all military age males in a strike zone. And um, I get to this article right here, US soups up kill list, digs in for 10 year drone war. This is all around the news today says Obama's intent on making it a pertinent feature of U.S. policy. Again, I, I just can't stand when they put Obama because it's just, why don't they just put the CIA's intent on making it a permanent feature of U.S. policy or the Council on Foreign Relations intent on making it a permanent feature of U.S. policy. This isn't just here. The Chinese, I just reported on that, or they're getting drones. I, Iran's trying to have their own drones. U.K. just uh, bought more drones and the US just said they're gonna be buying more drones why do you think because of this and they say it's to it be see you're supposed to be happy as a tax slave you're supposed to be happy that they're doing this because in this tough economy they're trying to pinch pennies to help save money for the American people that's what they're see you should be happy they're saving money with these drone strikes there's it's a slim down special forces strike force so it says that the problem with the drone is it's like your lawnmower. You've got to mow the lawn all the time. The minute you stop mowing, the grass is going to grow back, former CIA analyst and Obama counterterrorism advisor said. It's an interesting quote because I've covered about the double tap strikes about how when the CIA goes in there and strikes in Yemen or Pakistan or wherever, Afghanistan, and they kill people on their wedding nights and stuff like that, they like to go back and they like to wait for the family members who are concerned about their uh, family uh, uh, family members uh, body parts uh, strewn all over their their uh, their property and like to go pick up the arms and the heads and and all the little accoutrements and, and stuff like that and try to give their their deceased members some dignity uh, but no see that they, they like to come in and they like to strike the family members who are trying to help them and kill them as well it's called a double tap strike uh, strike in that so so the military has spent two years the past two years developing what it calls a disposition matrix or the kill list a complex database keeping tabs on targets and plans to eliminate them according to the washington post what's more is the obama regime expects to keep adding names to the list for years such as as says officials are saying such assassinations are likely to continue for at least another decade well that's great it goes in and talks about everything i was just talking about about uh you know Petraeus uh, wanted to beef up the CIA uh, drone fleet, uh, talking about what? Uh, U.S. Joint Special Operations, Special Forces, which is why they're conditioning the public about special forces and, you know, uh, 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 terrorism uh, task force teams and torturing is great and everything. We are looking at something that is potentially indefinite, says the CIA's former deputy. So this is what I was talking about before. I've covered this about a year ago about uh, the U.S. Navy down in Florida. Uh, creating their own directed energy uh, department and facility now so it's 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 big time and uh, we're not the only ones that have it you can be rest assured the russians have it as well uh, navy's top geek says laser arsenal is just two years away so it's just two years away right so our directed energy the term for the navy's laser cannons i'd say two years says the rear admiral see never mind the lo the looming defense cuts see <laughs> i love how they play that because that's the argument they make using robots to replace humans. It's a twofold reason. Number one, they're indispensable. These drones, uh, they even talk about kamikaze drones. Um, and what else? You don't have to pay them benefits or anything, these drones. Um, they could do thinking on their own. They replace the soldier. Also, when they do that, then they replace a soldier who may not take orders anymore. So eventually that guy, those Air Force pilots are sitting in those little uh, nice cozy leather brown chairs. Um, uh, killing people, whatever, how, however far away with these drone strikes, they're going to be obsolete too uh, because they don't want people asking questions and they don't want people with hearts uh, starting to question the morality of what they're doing. Now, see, they have these drone submarines also. But, uh, yeah, the, the crazy thing is is that it's called, what, the theory of singularity? And it's, I, don't, I honestly, personally, if anyone were to ask me, I don't think anything's going to stop it. I don't think any protests, any voting, or any violence is going to stop what's coming, which is the uh, singularity theory as far as um, augmented reality, um, cyborgs, artificial intelligence. It's coming, and uh, the biggest countries, the U.S., the West, and Russia support it. So everything will become um, automated. 
and uh, you know eventually it's going it could get out of hand but uh, it doesn't really matter because the elites themselves if they get to that point down the road um they're supposed to be in control of all this they themselves will be turned into uh, possibly these big um uh, uh kind of cyborg machines they they go completely into the matrix or colonize somewhere else and leave the uh, machines and that to monitor and control the planet manage it Boeing tests microwave missiles that can knock out all electronics so they're testing a missile so they already taught we already know about uh, what an uh, EMP electromagnetic pulse to knock out electronics and stuff like that but now they're talking about the champ counter uh, electronics high-powered advanced missile project may one day change warfare says Boeing this technology marks a new era in the modern day warfare there's a long way to go though see uh, before the microwave can be placed into a missile and used to disable targets without loss of life but the team is hopeful it could prove to be a milestone in non-lethal warfare so non-lethal warfare what they're talking about is doing uh, uh creating this situations you know manipulating the environment like i said taking out people's electronics and most people will just freak out i hate to say it. i mean maybe not most people but uh, at least 40 percent of people will just start stealing from each other they'll start beating each other up raping pillaging uh because that's how they're conditioned to, to act i mean for the most part uh, most communities are hanging uh, by a thread uh, when I see everything, I see if the electronics go out, electricity goes out, and the stores start running out of shell, uh, you know, shelves are empty, uh, you know, people are going to start going after each other. They're not going to be, quote, civil anymore. To me, that breaks my heart because it's just like, why does it have to be that way? I mean, people should be happy. They should be happy. There will be no cops. There will be no government. There will be no one forcing you to pay taxes, forcing you to get a job. You can do whatever you want. You can form your own little communities uh, somewhere and, and try to be by yourselves and get along and don't have to rely on this stupid-ass grid anymore. But uh, so many people have been conditioned and brainwashed, I mean, just of all age groups, that uh, you'll be coerced, you'll be fo forced back onto the grid because that's the only way for them. Then to another tragic story, Libya. Pro-government forces take control of old Gaddafi stronghold. It says forces loyal to Libyan government have recaptured the town of Bani Walid, a traditional uh, stronghold of former uh, ruler Muammar Gaddafi. So this is a this is just a really sad story because this is the result of of what happened in Libya. Is now these people in Bani Walid? I remember listening to a Libyan that actually lives there. Uh, I don't know if he was in Bani Walid, but. He was talking about how how all these people from Misrata and and other places in the east out east uh, would basically be armed and foreigners and they would come in and they would just wreak havoc on this uh, on this town on Bani Walid and they wouldn't let up so it's been getting pretty pretty crazy lately and so what is it what do they do well they don't just remove them they occupy this area now so and then of course what do you have after that well you have a bunch of people that are fleeing so it says here bonnie wali residents say military and control of surrounding districts as tens of thousands flee so that's how they help them and this guy's scratching his head like oh my god what the f did i just do u.s blocks russia's draft statement and u.n on peaceful resolution of bonnie wali violence of course i have to keep saying this about libya it is what as I saw, Afro Synergy, uh, T. West, he made a really good video series on Libya. I, I recommend you check that out because uh, I made the same point. People are making the arguments about foreign policy and whether it would be better with Obama or Romney. Just skip right through the crap and say we shouldn't have even have been there. Why were we there? Why, why did we support that? What happened? And that's how you get the neocons to shut the hell up about security. The United States has blocked a draft statement proposed by Russia on the resolution of violence in the Libyan town, Bani Walid, which has been under siege for weeks. The statement called for a peaceful solution on the conflict. Blocking a draft statement that called to solve the country's political problems without violence is very strange, um, said, what, Russia's envoy. This is a case when it is difficult to explain the U.S. delegation's actions in rational terms. That's because, that's because what? Their purpose is to create instability in their region and keep it like that. Like in Syria, what they're doing is they want to cr create more instability, which is why they couldn't get enough to get the regime changed, so they had to create more in Lebanon. 
So it goes on here, Lawrence Freeman from uh, Executive Intelligence Review says the U.S. will block any peaceful solution on uh, ending the ongoing violence in Libya. He said the ambassador from Russia made a perfectly reasonable proposal. Also said what? That the problem is that the President, Obama, the U.S. envoy, Suzanne Rice, and of course all these think tanks are not interested in developing peace in Libya and in the whole Middle East and therefore are going to torpedo any moves that the Russians make to quiet the situation. Next up, Israeli jets bomb factories in the Sudan. So, bomb factories, Sud uh, the Sudanese regime allege on Wednesday, after an explosion tore through the facility in the southern capital. Then back to that region, uh, Mali. Pentagon weighs U.S. military options in Mali. They neither confirm nor deny the reports of the secret talks that are underway between U.S. and France. Uh, plans to bring northern Mali back under control of the country's central government. And uh, France just sent drones there, and Germany is considering training in Mali. So, Russia, Syria, rebels have U.S. made weapons. So, pretty interesting. Uh, Lavrov just made a pretty bold statement about geopolitics and U.S. yesterday. Then they uh, made this statement about Syria, rebels have U.S. Uh, made weapons. They've also made a statement that uh, the Turkish skyjacking uh, the uh, Syrian-bound Russian plane uh, actually put their own people in harm's way. So I don't know about actions, physical actions, but Russia is uh, definitely escalating uh, their stance. Obama the Muslim ploy to cover up years of al-Qaeda support. So the U.S. establishment admits arming al-Qaeda but blames it on Obama the Muslim. And they're referring to a neocon Frank Gaffney thinks you're stupid. So, yeah, after arming the Arab world, or Al-Qaeda in the Arab world, uh, for decades, it goes on and it says that he and his colleagues are attempting to jettison responsibility and all the blunders that have come with the plot on U.S. President Barack Obama. Gaffney, the real reason behind Benghazi Gate, was, uh, it says here, it was Obama gun-walking arms to jihadists. This was the Washington Times article that he wrote. In fact, Seymour Hersh in 2007's New Yorker article titled, The Redirection is the Administration or the Regime's New Policy Benefiting Our Enemies in the War on Terrorism, compiled interviews from the Bush regime as well as Saudi Lebanese politicians who openly admitted that weapons, cash, support were already being lent to extremist groups, many ties with ties to Al-Qaeda and the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, plus, you know, I've, I've actually covered <laughs> articles mainstream, New York Times and stuff like that about, um, the, I don't know if they're Stinger missiles, but some kind of missiles. Uh, being funneled by the CIA to the rebels that were getting into the hands of the jihadists. So, okay, so look what I found. Al-Qaeda goes underground in Yemen against U.S.-driven crackdown. Of course, there's South Yemen, North Yemen, the South Yemen wants to secede, so that's what it's about. And um, also, what? It's about trade routes and stuff like that as well. CIA in the West have been carrying out drone strikes in Somalia right across that, right across that pond in the Gulf of Aden. They're pretty much like I said, they're hiding in caves now, Al-Shabaab and them, uh, laying low. Then in Yemen, they're saying the same thing. They're going underground, again, because of these drown, uh, drone strikes. Yeah, so it says exactly what I just said. Despite increased U.S. drone strikes to eliminate, ooh, the militants. Here is worrying for top oil exporter Saudi Arabia next door and security of major shipping lanes in the seas of Yemen. So why is that important? The militants actually renamed themselves Ansar al-Sharia. Actually, I think they were just put on the terrorist list recently. We're talking about the petrodollar. See, back in the day, what? They, there was an agreement made with OPEC that the U.S. would provide security for these Gulf countries, these OPEC countries, especially Saudi Arabia, if they trade their oil in dollars. So after Nixon's break with the gold, dollars expanded by more than 2,000% between 1970 and 2001. It says since most, most commodities are tied to dollars, this means that if you want to buy a barrel of Saudi oil, you must have dollars. In 72 to 73, the cabal made an ironclad agreement or arrangement with Saudi Arabia to support the power of the House of Saud in exchange for their only accepting U.S. dollars for its oil. The rest of OPEC was follow, following suit and also accept only dollars. Because the world had to buy oil from the Arab oil countries, it had this additional incentive to hold dollars as payment for oil. The cabal's trade partners, dollar imperialism victims throughout the world, hold so many dollars that they're afraid to create dollar crisis. In fact, that's what they're doing in Iran to try to uh, uh, side, uh, circumvent these sanctions. They're just using all these dollars that they have. But remember what I was talking about? Saudi Arabia may not actually have as much oil as they say. Uh, in Afghanistan, China is just starting to drill for oil. 
Uh, also in, in Libya, in Somalia, and I believe in Western Africa, there's oil, so that's why they're there. Are they done with Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia's secret Arab Spring. And why is this happening? U.S. may become the world's top oil producer. Thank you.